Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I'm not here to play music in the background to have any antics. I'm actually rather reserved this afternoon, but I'm also quite pissed off at people, the courts, the system, and stupidity. There was a particular group that I was, I allowed myself to be a part of on a particular platform and the person running the platform all right individual but the people on the platform most of them were okay it's just there was an I've gotta mind my words right now because I can't um, allow myself to be taken aback by the intelligence of the individual he has communicated with SACOM on occasion and he decided that he had an opinion that he wanted to express, but he decided to make it personal. Now, he didn't say anything too derogatory, but it was disrespectful nonetheless. Because I gave individuals the law, and then I gave them supported case opinion, not case law, because it's not law. Courts don't get to make law, and that's exactly what the issue was, that the courts don't get to make law. But the courts make this... Shut up. I don't see how a five-year-old child can tell a 60-year-old man what to do. You're not 60! I'm just using a hyperbole! I apologize. It is obvious that the individual doesn't understand law. He, no, no, he understands argument because that's what he wanted to do. I choose not to argue. I choose to state facts. So I got something I want to show you guys, and I'm going to put the link to this in the description. This is Carl Miller. This man was before my time, but this is the type of person I learned what I know from. That's why you hear me talking about common law all the time. That's why you hear me talking about supreme law, the land being the Constitution, the which is the Bill of Rights. The Constitution is not the 11th Amendment, the 12th Amendment, and all that junk that came afterwards. That junk was not ratified by the people. But yet, no, no, shut up. All this stuff about the founding fathers, it had nothing to do with no so-called founding fathers. They had nothing to do with the pinning of the Constitution. But they, shut up. All of you, you don't understand the history of this nation. What year did Columbus arrive in America? Was it 1776? No, it was 1492. 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. They teach that stupid thing to children. So what happened, everyone, from 1492 to 1776? What were the laws of the nation between that? The laws of England? No, it wasn't. Man, in England, they had the law merchants and all that junk, but not here in the new land. Well, what laws they have? Each colony created their own set of laws to govern their own people, to keep the society from being lawless and to remain, as they referred to it, as being civilized. However, prior to them bringing more people over here, thinking that they could improve on the land, the first people to come over here were the ones who were being religiously oppressed. Yeah, they were the ones going around and talking about the Bible and preaching to their neighbors and going from door to door, letting their neighbors know about God to the best of their ability according to their understanding of the Bible at that time. Why? Because it was against the law in England to own a Bible, to possess a Bible. The only ones allowed to own a Bible during that period of time and for several hundred years, not just 10, 15, 20 years, for several hundred years, only the priest, Catholic priests, were permitted to own a Bible, to possess a Bible. Anyone else who did so, anyone else who did so, Martin Luther, anyone else who did so, Calvin, anyone else who did so, William Tyndale, were eventually put to death. Remember, William Tyndale and several other people produced Bibles, published Bibles, secretly spending their all of their wealth, all of their monies to do this in secret but go ahead and look at how many of them were put to death, killed, because they gave the people knowledge. 
Anyway, so the people were leaving England because they were being oppressed, burned at the stake, tortured for talking about the Bible. So they came to the new land, but they couldn't go south. Why? Because there was a treaty that gave England the Eastern Hemisphere and gave Spain the Western Hemisphere. They divided the world between Eastern and Western Hemisphere. That's why Spain, not England, was in the Americas. South America, go ahead. It doesn't have no English influence. It has all Spaniard influence. But everything West, I mean Eastern, is all English history. Go ahead. Go ahead and you check it. That's why all the Latin languages of South America, the whole continent of South America is Latin. Mexico, Latin. Southern United States, Latin. Because it was all conquered by Spain. That's why Spain was in Florida. So Columbus couldn't go to Florida. He couldn't take the English to Florida. <laughs> Those They were still English, even though they were coming to the Americas. They were still English. So he had to take them north, further away from the English so that there wouldn't be any conflict because they were leaving conflict. So he took them north, but it was winter time coming up. So he prepared them as best they could and many of them died. There was no slavery being brought to America. One of his passengers was a black man who was free, 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 free. So, all that history you learned was wrong. Because you're going by some book some idiot wrote, as opposed to going by the actual history. Go back and look at the time period in England in the 1600s. Go back and look at the reason why the people, they, they give you the story about the pilgrims, but the pilgrims they're talking about is the 1600s, not the 1400s. Go ahead and look at the history of Columbus. He wasn't even alive in 1692. Go ahead. So, now that you get a better understanding of Columbus, who he was, and what he was, yay, $11.01. All right. Now that you have a better understanding of who he was, because he's not important. That idiot is not important. He didn't discover nothing. The only thing he did was provided passage and he charged a fee. Many of those individuals had to save their entire life savings. They gave that man for a passage to the so-called Americas. And when they arrived here, they had to depend on the Indians because they didn't have much. And the Indians gave to them freely because that's the Indians. They were hospitable. And the people who came were hospitable in return. They helped each other out. They worked out agreements. And they were here for a moment before Columbus came back and found out that more than half of them had died. Okay, disease and a couple of other things and winter and so on and so forth. But nonetheless, many survived. They had their rules. They had their ways of doing things. They created a new culture. And it was all without the king's law. But, 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 shut the up. All of you who believe that the common law was that of England, those people didn't bring no English stuff with them. They were leaving England. The king ruled England. And he oppressed the people. He oppressed the poor people. These were poor people who came over here. It wasn't anybody rich. Why would a rich person leave their wealth, their home, their fortune, and come over to some new land where there is nothing there. Just forests, trees, wilderness. What the flying fart are you people smoking when you believe that junk they teach you in these stupid schools? It was the poor people who came here. And they came here with nothing. And the land they landed on was nothing. And the first thing these people came, uh, when they came here did, the captain of the ship, I mean, not the captain of the ship, but the person leading the group, the so-called governor, the first thing he did, pay attention, 
The first thing he did, pay attention. The first thing he did was offered a prayer to the God known as Jehovah. You don't believe me? Go ahead and get a copy of the prayer. And you'll see the God he prayed to was Jehovah. That should give you an idea of who these people were. Don't, uh -uh, don't take my word for it. Go back and look at the actual history. Not only was one of the men on the ship, a black man, who was free, that this particular governor mentions by name, not only did they pray to this God known as Jehovah, but the laws for which they brought here were those known as those commandments that you hear so much about, all ten of them. That was the basics and generality of their laws. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the common law. Those were the basics. The laws that was established by that group of people and the ones who came after in those particular colonies. Remember, there was only one colony at first. It established, the, pay attention, common law. Because it's the common law of the community is what it was. It wasn't the common law of the colony. They started with a set of laws and they built on it. But because, you know, oh no, you got right to religion. No, you can't impose. The Constitution is based on the Ten Commandments. Go back and take a look. When you get a chance, go take a look. That's why it takes two witnesses, not one. It says witnesses in the Fifth Amendment. It doesn't say witness, but most of you are tried by witness and then paperwork. <laughs> they use evidence as witnesses against you. Uh-uh. They, they're not allowed to use evidence as a witness against you. A witness against you is an eyewitness. Well, they can use your DNA. No, the Constitution did not envision nobody's DNA. Go back and take a look. And it hasn't been amended, so you can't add it without the amendment. Okay. Some of you are going to get this. Many of you are not. Because you're too indoctrinated by what you've been hearing. What you've been hearing judges say. What you've been hearing books say. What you've been hearing TV say. What you've been hearing Law and Order say and all these other stupid shows. That's your fault, not mine. I can only, look, I only think logically, I only think facts. I cannot tell you supposition and all this other stupid stuff because it doesn't work that way. I can only tell you what the law says. Okay? So, back to the Constitution. The first ten amendments, the very first thing it says, and everybody reads it wrong and I don't understand why, it says, Congress shall make no law. That's a statement. Then it says, comma. Why is there a comma? The reason why there is a comma, because that's a separation. It's now going to tell you the things in which Congress can make no law regarding. Congress shall make no law was that Congress was not the lawmakers. We keep saying Congress is the lawmakers. Congress doesn't make law. The people make law. Go back and look at how the Constitution was enacted. The Founding Fathers, they ain't no such thing as those stupid Founding Fathers. The so-called Founding Fathers did not write the Constitution. The people did. The people sent to their delegates, sent them back to, well, it wasn't Washington because Washington was not the central place of government. Go back, pay attention. They didn't send them to Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. didn't come until later. 1800s is when Washington was made, Washington, D.C., was established. So they didn't send them back to Washington, D.C. Philadelphia? Ah, interesting, ain't it? And when they sent them back, they sent them back with what they had decided upon. The people decided, not Congress. The people told them, this is what we're agreeing to. Remember, there was more than 13 amendments at first. We had the law of the Confederacy and all that junk at first, and then they had the uh, Northwest Ordinance, but it was the people who decided those things. They didn't just come up with these and said these are going to govern you. The people had already thrown off the shackles of being governed by some authority. They were deciding majority rule. So when they brought those amendments to the people, the people had forms. They had town halls, which is still the practice to this day. They met at the city center, such as the capital, we call them today. The county office or building. And they met at the caverns and the taverns and all of these other little stupid meeting places. And they decided by vote 
which one of those that they were going to allow. Some of them oppressive, and they said no. They took it back to Congress, and because all of the different colonies had selected a few, they got rid of three of them because there was no consensus on those three. Not my fault. I didn't make this up. The people sent it by their delegates to Washington, D.C. The delegates didn't vote for the people. The delegates were told by the people, this is what we want. And the delegates took it back to Washington to make sure that they voted on what they wanted. Not the other way around like it's done today where the so-called delegates to tell you what you want. Well, you elected me to do this and so I'm going to do what I feel is right. Excuse me, what the... Where did that junk come in at? Anyway, I don't care about the Constitution. The Constitution is a piece of junk to me. I serve the God of the heavens. His name is Jehovah. Whether you like it or not, that's who I serve. Whether you appreciate him or not, that's who I serve. Whether you appreciate that or not, I don't care. That's why I could care less about the Constitution. But I will tell you one thing, and you've been hearing me say it for years that the Constitution is a contract. Well, guess what? Carl Miller, Carl Miller is a constitutionalist. He is a common law, common law persona. Or, I'm sorry, was a common law persona. Carl Miller, you'll hear him talk about common law all throughout. Now, you know this wasn't written by Carl, right? Okay, but this is what Carl, most of what Carl put together. And you'll see, and like I said, you're going to get this. I'm going to show you where to find Carl Miller's videos. Because I told you, I knew I had heard the video before, but I couldn't picture it because it's been so many years since I've heard it. But let me, I don't agree with everything he says because some of it I can disprove. In other words, what he had at the time is what he had. This was way back in the... Uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s that Carl did all of this. We didn't have the internet at that time. I didn't study under Carl. I studied from people who learned information from Carl and other people like him. Like I told you, I'm the guy, the kid, getting on a uh, city public transportation bus going to school. It took me two hours to get to school every day. I'm getting up at 4.30 in the morning leaving at 5.15 every day to go to school and not getting home until after 6 every day. So I had time to sit on the bus, bus stop at the bus stop at the bus stop at the bus stop, talking to the older men who were going to work and meeting them on the way home, running to get to the bus to get on the same bus as they were and disappointed when they weren't there. And we got to talk every day. Technically, they were my friends. Literally, knew them by name, we talked every day, and this is the stuff we would talk about. Okay, we would talk about the so-called politics of the day, and I would let them know I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses, blah, blah, blah. I don't do politics, but I'll talk about the issues. And we talked about the issues, people, and they respected me. Now, you may not have ever met that kid, but there is a kid like that in every city who doesn't relate to people his own age. He only relates to people older than him. And he has those conversations that he can't have with people his own age because they can't understand what he's talking about. I have met those kids. I have met Toriano Herrera, who was far beyond me at his age. And I'm sorry that that young man took his life because, Lord, he would have been a power today. I would have been bouncing things off him instead of him bouncing things off me. Because he was a youngster, but his thinking was beyond mine. And I admit that. And even then, my thinking then was more than it is now. Hands down. Because I was a whole lot more before the stupid operation. And I, I say that wholeheartedly. And everybody who knew me and know me back then know that I was a whole lot more than I am now. But what I can tell you this, those of you who think that I know something, is I was listening to Carl just earlier today, 
and I say to this that I only listen to about 15 minutes, uh, well, not even 15 minutes, because I stop, because it's the same video that I was showing you that you were listening to the audio. This is the one where he's actually speaking. Let me give you a demonstration of Carl actually speaking. Give me a second to see if I can... Dagnabbit. I, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to... Let's do this. I'm going to have to put him in here and pull it up on YouTube. So give me one second copy. And I thought I had it here already, but I didn't. And I saw we... No, this is Carl Miller, but this is somebody else talking about Carl Miller. So I'm going to put both links. Give me a second so I can show you. I will put the link for that, but this is Carl Miller right here, everyone. This is Carl. Okay? This is Carl. And the only reason why I'm pointing out Carl to you, I don't care about the, the rest of these videos, but here is a bunch of videos on Carl. Okay? And there are a lot of audios, because most of what he did was, uh, what you call it, 1975. Here's the problem. A lot of people go back and they listen to Carl, and they don't do the research, so they'll repeat some of the things he said, and other people will repeat it, and then they'll add to it, and ad lib, and they'll go all off on tirades. You can't do that. So let me let you listen to Carl for a second. Hold on. One second. Carl, you got something you want to say? Hey, Carl wants to say something. Yo. All right. Now, this doesn't look like much, but let me tell you something. What we're talking about doing here, see, most cities, at least in the state of Michigan, are by Public Act 230 Public Acts or Public Act 287 of Public Acts, and in every one of them there is a rights and powers section. Usually it's recorded at 2.2 or 3.1, and it basically says, and I quote, we're going to stop right there. See, he's talking about Michigan because that's where he is. Okay, now he did several videos. This one is only 12.9 minutes. Okay, I don't want you to listen to this one. Some of you can listen to this one because he's doing the writ of Quaranto and he's doing the writ of Mandamus. And you're right to do it in every state, not just in one state. You're right to do a writ of Mandamus and a writ of Quaranto in every state. But I don't want you to listen to that one. I don't even know if you're going to listen to this one. I'm going to suggest you listen to this one because this is uh, one through three. And you'll see this is play all. Okay, but you see they're quite long. It's this one right here that's five hours long. Okay. I promise you you'll learn something. I promise you you'll learn something. Again, I promise you you will learn something. The Ridical Warranto. He is 100% right. I remember Jack, Dr. Jack Kevorkian. He died a couple of years ago. I remember Jack Kevorkian. I remember when he was doing the, the... You know, letting people die, giving them the medication to die, and he was just doing the assisted death. Doing it before they made it legal. Now, technically, statutory law, he was violating statutory law. Okay, he was violating statutory law. Now, was he violating any other law? He wasn't violating the Constitution. There's nothing in the Constitution that says that he couldn't do what he did. He did not violate the common law, people. There was not a single common law that prohibited him doing what he did. He had a contract with somebody. All he did was assisted that individual. That individual was the one committing suicide. Jack Kevorkian was only there to assist well, he's guilty by association. No, that's not common law. That's statutory law. There's no such thing as guilty by association in the Constitution. Go ahead and see if you can find that phrase anywhere within the Bill of Rights. There is no such thing as guilty by association. I just had a conversation with somebody today and he spoke to me. I'm going to pull this up right here. Because I'd rather pull up these because these are all Carl Miller. And I'm going to stop it right here because this is a playlist. And I have um, a software that I'm going to use. It's called Cuckoo, 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 Cuckoo. This is right here, Cuckoo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Cuckoo. And then this video is not going to be much longer, ladies and gentlemen, because i got some work to do. And I've been up for quite some time this morning, so I, I don't have a lot of time before I'm not going to have any energy to do nothing. Um... MS Guides, msguides.com, 
It's what I use to activate my Microsoft products. We're going to go to... Oh, no, I did the wrong thing. Sorry. All right. Ah, no, I can't do that. I did the wrong thing. Give me a second, people. See? Y'all got me all discombobulate, bobbly. Yeah, yeah, that's what y'all got me. So I'm supposed to be doing this one right here. Copy. Minimize. Paste. Enter. And let's see if it's going to let me copy. Description updated better. So I got to pause it. Okay. And then I got to get to this window because I prefer this window right here. Get Good evening, folks. Too. I want to thank you for inviting Call me into in your home second, tonight Bible. to talk to you about an extremely... Now you can tell that this is the 70s because you hear how Carl speaks in the 80s and the 90s. And you can tell uh, his demeanor. He says, I want to thank you for inviting me into your homes tonight. So what I'm going to do is I want to download this. Okay. Now, this is Cuckoo. This is what Cuckoo lets me do. Where you at, Cuckoo? You're supposed to be showing up at the bottom here. Where you at? Give me a second to a minute. Uh-oh. It's going to tell me you want to save this. I'm like, yeah, you know, I want to save it. What's wrong with you? So Cuckoo going to let me save it. And there it is showing up right there, showing it's downloaded. Uh-oh, whoa. Oh, that's because it's five hours long. Cuckoo said, man, do you know what you're doing to me? And I'm like, Cuckoo, I ain't do that to you on purpose. Cuckoo says, it's going to take eight hours to download this video. And I'm like, Cuckoo, why is it going to take you eight hours? Because you 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 getting it from this place. That's why it's going to take long. So I'm going to let that happen. I have another software that I'm going to use to download it. But for right now, I'm going to let that happen. This is the five-hour one. I promise you, I have some other things I need to take care of. And what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to listen to this probably tonight when I go to sleep. Because I have a software on my phone. Like you say, now it's four hours. And it's probably going to be less. It's three hours now, two hours. Because it's only uh, 1.2 gigabytes long. So now it says 50 minutes. 40 minutes, 37 minutes, and 25 minutes, 21 minutes, 19 minutes, 17, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, 8 minutes, 7 minutes, 6 minutes. Uh-oh, look at that. It's actually 5 minutes. It says it's going to be finished. That's what I'm looking for. Now, that's what I'm talking about, Chief. All right, so it says 7 minutes, 8 minutes, and the more I move around and everything, the more it's going, the longer it's going to take. So in less than 15 minutes, it should be taken care of. And it's going to be going up and down, up and down, up and down. So I'm okay with that. Getting back to the conversation. If you listen to Carl, don't listen to me. If you listen to Carl, you'll see that he's been, that he's saying a lot of the things that I've been saying. That he talks about the Constitution being a contract. Now, what is a contract? An agreement between two or more peoples where somebody receives the benefit from another person and the other person receives the benefit. The first thing the Constitution says in the preamble, we don't care what the courts say, the preamble says. The preamble says what it says. We don't need anybody to interpret the preamble for us because the preamble says what it says. We, the people of the United States, who were the people of the United States? Were, was it not the people of the colonies? No, it was the delegates. What the makes you think it was the delegates? Go back and look at the history. The people are the ones who told the delegates what to go back to Washington for. Now, hold on now. Wait a minute. Why did the delegates have to go, I mean, not Washington, uh, Pennsylvania. Why did the delegates have to go back to Pennsylvania if the delegates were the ones to make the rules? They didn't have to go back to Pennsylvania. All they had to do was come and tell the people, this is the new law. Go ahead, like it is today. They just tell the people, this is the new law, and that's it. But originally, they had to go back to Philadelphia. Why? Pay attention. Back to Philadelphia. Not go to Philadelphia and then make a decision. And, no, no, no. They had to go back to Philadelphia because they had to take what the people wanted them to say back to Philadelphia and vote on it. So this thing took less than five minutes because it's more than halfway downloaded already. Okay? That's what I'm talking about, Chief. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is the problem for all of you. Now, I'm going to send you the link for all of the videos, all five of them. 
and I want this one right here so let's see if we can get this that's what I'm looking for so I'm gonna send you guys this link so you can have this okay so that you can have all of these videos I want you to listen to Carl because he talks about all of this he talks about because I don't do what I think I don't do what I heard other people talk about I do the actual law what the actual law says in the United States the law is one thing it's not what the courts say it is it's not what Congress say it is Congress doesn't get to make law the very first amendment is Congress shall make no law Then it says, which abrides the right of the people, the freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, freedom of the right to peacefully assemble, and the freedom to petition the government for redress of grievance. That's the First Amendment. I didn't understand it at first until somebody made me go over it. Another constitutionalist. His name was Richard Fuller, a rocket scientist, believe it or not. And he was of the same era as Mr. Carl and he was of the same mindset of Mr. Carl. See, I don't like following the rules of the court. Can't stand the rules of the court. The court doesn't get to rule over anyone. Do you guys understand what I just said? Rules of the court? Who, who gave the court the right to rule? Now, the court can have procedures, but they don't have the right to rule. A, a ruling? The court's ruling? The court doesn't get the right to rule over anybody. No branch of government rules over anybody in the United States. See, I do know that. I know that to be a fact, that there is nothing in the Constitution giving any branch of government the right to rule. The contract simply says that they are to redress the wrongs of the people. So if I commit a wrong against you, then you have the right to go to the court. Say, hey, uh, these people did this to me, and no, I'm a witness, and here's my brother. He saw it too. Okay, well, I'm going to issue a warrant for that person's arrest. But before I can issue a warrant, i got to bring them in here and let them stand before you. That's the arraignment, people. The arraignment, the arrest is not supposed to happen before the arraignment unless they actually caught you in the midst of committing the crime. But what if the person ran? It didn't matter. It didn't have anything to do with what ifs. The Constitution simply says, unless upon probable cause, no warrant shall issue. No warrant. Not, well, some warrants. No, it said no warrant shall issue. None. They need probable cause. Well, how do you obtain probable cause? Well, probable cause has to be a hearing. You've heard of a probable cause hearing. It hasn't changed. A probable cause has to be a hearing. A hearing means you have the right to be present. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? They do have probable cause hearings. You just are not present when they are seeking a warrant for your arrest. The prosecution, the police, meet with the judge, either by phone or by paper, and the judge issues a warrant for probable cause that's called an ex parte hearing. It's illegal. That process is illegal and nobody's ever challenged it. Everybody's always accepted it. Probable cause means that you have a right to be present at that hearing. When they met with the judge and introduced evidence against you, that's a violation of due process because they have to give you the opportunity of being present. The Supreme Court has already said it's the most fundamental of all due process rights is your right to be present if any significant property interests are being deprived of you or soon to be deprived of you that you have a right to a hearing so what do they do they give you a hearing after you get arrested and that hearing is only arraignment no you're here to be arraigned go and look at the constitution and see if you see anything about a stupid arraignment well the courts get to make up the procedures where is that law that the courts get to make up the procedure? The Constitution doesn't say anything about the court gets to make up the procedure for the arrest after the arrest. Go ahead. The Fourth Amendment, the Constitution is an outline, step by step. First Amendment protects your rights. It says Congress cannot make any laws which abridges those rights. Those are your most fundamental and basic rights. Then it says you have the right to bear arms, and it says under no circumstances is that right to be infringed upon. See, remember, the infringement of rights continue all through the Tenth Amendment. 
Those are the laws Congress cannot make a law against. That's what the Constitution is. It's a complete document, a contract. Congress shall not make a law that abridges the right of the people. We, we divide it up into First Amendment, Second Amendment, Third. No, no, no. It's not divided. The original Constitution is not divided into, well, this amendment is separate from that amendment. It's sequential. You have a right to protect yourself. They cannot make a law prohibiting you from protecting yourself. Pay attention. Then the next one, and the military. They cannot quarter themselves in someone's home without their permission. Now, they say save during a time of war and all that stuff. No, they don't have that permission. But they say for to protect the nation, okay, fine, give them the permission. Now, let's go to the next one, the Fourth Amendment. You have the right not to be put to anybody's arrest without probable cause of a crime. Because why? Because individuals could easily say you committed a crime and they come and arrest you and take your property and everything else from you and put you in jail for life without you having done anything. That was the way they did things back then, people. So they had to make a law preventing people because that's the way the King of England and the so-called barristers and all those other people who ruled in England, that's the way they did things. Issuing warrants just to be issuing warrants because a person didn't agree with them on this and didn't agree with them on that. That's what they were getting away from, and so that's why they made laws saying they could not do these things. Then the Fifth Amendment. No one could be subjected to any trial unless upon indictment or information. Now, this was throughout the United States. Remember, all of the nations, so we have this thing about state laws, state constitutions, and uh, federal constitution. There was no such thing. The original constitution was a constitution for the entire nation. That's why the entire nation voted on it. Pay attention. Don't take my word for it. Go back and look. There was nothing in the Constitution. Pay attention about the states having their own Constitution. The 10th and 11th Amendment reserved for the states and the people, respective, aside from the Constitution. So they could not step outside the Constitution. Could they make antecedent laws, laws in addition? Yes, as long as they didn't abridge the rights protected by the Constitution. That's why every state constitution has to agree with the United States Constitution. Now, we ain't doing no update. I didn't ask you to do no update. Get on out of here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Fifth Amendment says no one can be put through any trial without due process. The moment they deny you due process, there is no trial. They don't have the right to put you through the process. That's why they have to be perfect. They can only bring a crime unless there was evidence of a crime. They could not charge somebody for a crime if they didn't have evidence of a crime. Sorry, give me a second. Since I'm doing this video, I might as well go ahead and take care of the next one too. Because it don't make no sense. Let me pause them for a second. It don't make no sense me sitting up here doing all this talking. It's going to start up again because that's what it does. But I'm going to do this while it's doing that. Alright, then the Sixth Amendment. If you're going to be held for a crime... You have the right to counsel of choice. See, back then, they didn't have these things called lawyers that were stepping up every time and they're being officers of the court. They didn't start that stupid officers of the court thing until years later. I mean, year, 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 years later. Give me a second. Let me get rid of this. Get out of here. And that's one drive again. I said no. Sorry. Is <laughs> that so stubborn? Uh, that's my uh, firewall saying, firewall saying no. Absolutely not. Like uh, my girl would say, absolutely not, Deborah Cox. Anyway, so the Sixth Amendment gave you the right to counsel. Night and he's pulling them Everyone has the right to counsel of choice. You have the right to consult with whomever you want. Nobody can force you to consult with somebody. They cannot force an attorney on you because that's your right. They cannot force you to give up your right to counsel, but they have done that. Why have they done that? Because people have not challenged it appropriately. Not my fault. I didn't do that. I can only tell you what your rights are. Go back and look at the Constitution. So what we're going to talk about in just a second, as soon as I do this one, this will be the last one. Okay, this will be the last one. And as you see, this one still says a lot of hours. And this one is going to say, really, you're going that fast, huh? So this one will do what it do. Something ain't right because I don't see my, it was up here a second ago, so it's still working. So I got to wait. There we go.
All right, so I'm gonna let that do what it do because that's what we do around here. We, we let it do what it do. And I'm gonna let that go in the background. Like I said, I'm gonna download these, put them on my phone and listen to them tonight uh, while I go to sleep because he says a couple of things and it reminds me of a couple of things that I don't focus on anymore that I should be. So I'm giving Carl his credit. And when I saw his videos in the 90s, I mean 2009, 2010, 2011, I didn't really focus on him because most of the stuff he was saying I already knew. But I am focusing on him now because he's going to remind me of things that I knew before. He says, know your constitution. Many of you don't know the constitution. Many of you do not know the constitution. Many of you think you know what the constitution says. You know the Constitution verbatim, but you don't know what the actual Constitution means. You don't know what each word means. I told you, the gentleman, Mr. Richard Fuller, he, out of all the people in that facility, we were in jail together. He's a rocket scientist. He was in there because of taxes. So they went after him for taxes because he did the same type of tax stuff that you guys did because they didn't understand how to send a letter like I did. And I didn't know he was in there for taxes until later. But he didn't understand how to do what I did. He didn't understand to send a letter to the IRS saying that I'm a non-taxpayer and I need to rebut the presumption. Because there is no definition in the IRS code for a non-taxpayer. It's only a definition for a taxpayer. So a taxpayer is a statutory citizen. A non-taxpayer is not a statutory citizen. I told you, I did the video in 2012 where I called the IRS on my phone live putting all my information, I don't know why they took all those videos down, ladies and gentlemen, putting all of my information out there and having the IRS say, after asking me for the information over seven times, let me check this system, let me check this system over here. Sir, I cannot find you in our system. Now the reason why she says, sir, I can't find you in our system because she had already found my social security number. It's mine, I own the social security number. The IRS doesn't own the social security number. Social security doesn't own the social security number. I own it. It's been assigned to me. It's my property. I have it by way of assignment. Do you guys not understand what I'm saying here? Stop thinking that it's theirs. It's not theirs. I own it. They assigned it to me. The card may be their property, but once they give me that, I have it on bailment. I'm responsible for that card. If it's lost, it's to be returned to them. But as long as it's in my possession, it's mine, just like your ID. You sign a contract with the DMV, your driver's license, so when you get pulled over, the police, they get to compensate that. They get to take hold of that. That's theirs. You don't get to give me back my ID. That's not yours. You signed a contract allowing their peace officers, their police officers, their corporate officers to take back that particular piece of plastic. Why? Because you signed a contract. It really is that simple. You signed a contract with a driver's license to get pulled over. So stop saying, why'd you pull me over? Because you signed an agreement so that they could pull you over. You signed an agreement. You signed a contract. The application is a contract. I've already showed you guys that. I have an ID. And at the end of my signature is the word void on the ID. And it's on the contract void I told you how the officer didn't even want to pull me over because even on my card it said private property do not trespass and then it put the laws the the actual statute at large for not do not trespass federal and state it was all over the car I, I literally taped it to the car it was on the bumper the hood everything do not trespass but you have a license plate on the car. Does it matter? It says do not trespass private property. Ladies and gentlemen, if I have a vehicle in my yard and I have a sign on my yard that says do not trespass, a repo company cannot come on my property and repossess anything. As long as that sign says do not trespass and has the particular statute that deals with the penalties for trespassing and you can document, that's why I have cameras. I don't have anything they can repossess, but my cameras are on my property for a reason, to document everything that goes on here. I don't care how many, it's 180 feet, people. 
these cameras can pick up face and everything 180 feet so come near and everything's there why because I want to document anybody coming on this property because they will be arrested I will make sure of that I don't care if it's a police officer you better have a warrant and you better have that warrant before you come on the property and you better make sure that what you're looking for is here before you step on this property with a warrant because remember no warrant shall issue unless upon probable cause of the place and things that are to be searched so before they can issue a warrant there must be probable cause the police officer doesn't get to determine probable cause police officers can't determine probable cause only a judge can determine probable cause and they must do so by hearing they must have evidence presented to them well no evidence can be presented to a judge without you being able to cross-examine the evidence the evidence is being used as a witness you have a right to compulsory cross-examination of all witnesses so you have a right to cross-examine the evidence before the warrant issues that's right it says no warrant shall issue a lesson upon probable cause do you not understand so many of you are going up by the Constitution according to what you're reading in some case what some judge said what some so-called legal scholar said why are you listening to those idiots read it for what it says and then challenge them on it okay well the Supreme Court I don't give up what the Supreme Court said Supreme Court doesn't get to make the law and they do not get to interpret the law there is no law do you know who gave the Supreme Court the right to interpret the law they did in Madison versus Mulberry go ahead go take a look the Supreme Court gave themselves the authority to interpret the law and nobody challenged it they decided it in a case when it wasn't to be decided by them there is no constitutional amendment allowing the Supreme Court to decide the law again you don't believe me go take a look go read it for yourself don't take my word for it go and read it for yourself that no constitutional amendment gave the Supreme Court the authority to interpret the law the Supreme Court only gets authority when there is a controversy they don't get to make law they don't get to determine what the law is nor do they get to determine whether or not they have the authority to decide something only controversies ladies and gentlemen I'm sorry that many of you didn't know this I've known this since I went to school because in my school this is what they taught us in my school we didn't just take the teachers word for it we got to challenge the teacher if the teacher told us this is the way things were we got to say excuse me why is that why is that the way it is is it because you said it I told you when I grew up those of you who listen to my videos when I grew up my mother and father allowed me to question them now my brothers and sisters did not get to question my mother and father why does he get to do it because he's different seriously that was the response every single time why because it was the way I thought okay it wasn't that I was just asking questions just because I was curious I was asking questions because I needed to know the answer I didn't just ask questions just well why is the sky blue I never asked them why the stupid sky was blue or why is grass green or why is water wet ladies and gentlemen I ain't never asked no I apologize if this is offensive to some of you but I never asked a dumb question like that a day in my life I've never been that child my mind has never thought like that I told you when I was three years old I came downstairs crying to my mother and father and my father comes over and says what's wrong and I told him as I'm wiping my eyes as I'm crying they keep messing with me and he says oh come here and he picks me up and he brings me over to the table and he sits me down in his lap and he looks at me and he says my mother and him are both go aw and he says you know if you had Jehovah as your friend then nobody would mess with you and I said who is Jehovah and he says he's the most powerful person ever and I said what well, Jehovah is my friend that way nobody will mess with me that's how I thought as a kid that was my reasoning my logic my rationale I've always been that way all my life and Jehovah has been my friend ever since 
I've held conversations with him out loud, in private, everything. I rely on him for everything. I'm here to this day because of him, not because of me. I know what I know because of him, not because of me. He gets the credit, I don't. So when I tell you for a fact, when I look at the law, I look at it the same way I've always looked at everything, logically. When I look at the Constitution, when I say the law, because we talk about the law of the land, ladies and gentlemen, the law of the land is the Constitution because the land is the people. Now hold on now, you may not understand the statement, so I'm going to say it again. The land is the people. The land has always been the people. You have not ever heard the people of the land? The land has always been the people and you all have never understood the law of the land is the people. The people make the laws in the United States, not Congress. I know, I know, you just learned something. Go ahead and take a look. Go, go, let's, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Watch this. P-E-O-P-L-E -E of the L-A. And, the, and I put land in all capital letters for a reason. Let's find out what people of the land means. I don't want to hear that. I, I want to see. See, it says blazing saddles. There are people of the land. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not just any phrase. Holman Bible Dictionary. People of the land. Because it comes from the Bible. See, people of the land. Earth. The law of the land is the law of the people, people. Oh, look, that's from the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. I didn't know. I just know the phrase people of the land, people. So when they say law of the land, I understand it means law of the people, not law of the Congress. Okay, people of the land, pay attention. You'll see people of the land throughout the Bible. Okay, legends of the four host first nations. People of the land. Look, they are people of the land. That's what they said about the Indians, didn't they? So pay attention. The law of the land is the law of the people, not the law of Congress. That's why it said Congress shall make no law. I apologize if y'all didn't understand this from the very beginning. I've always understood that. Okay? I've always understood that. Look, Civilization CA Canada. And it says people of the land. They've always, it's always been the case. I don't know why people have never understood this. I've, I've always, I mean, it's always been understood to me. So look, hey, wait, no, 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 no. You can't just go into court and say, I'm part of the land. I'm one of the people of the land. And you do all that stuff. No, you have to speak it as if you know it, as if you don't need to explain it to anyone. That's why I said, I thought that everybody knew this until I just said it. Look, you saw me just type it in. Because I just needed to prove it to you. And I said I was going to put land in all capital letters. I've never searched that junk before. But you said you started the Watchtower by the track side. You job it, wouldn't you? So you must have known it because... No, because see, look. If we go to the Watchtower Bible and Track Society. Give me a second. It's right here. Online library. People of the land, the earth. People of the land, earth. People of the land, earth. Remember, God grew into his nostril the rest of life. And Adam became a living soul. So I am a man of earth, okay? I am a man of earth. I'm not just a man, I'm a man of earth, okay? Yes, 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 yes. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, because uh, they're, they're not gonna do anything to harm me. Why? Because I know. See, the Hittites were people of the land. The Canaanites were people of the land. So I've understood this because I've read the scriptures. So in Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon by I don't know this name or that name, explains this Hebrew expression means the citizens possessing the full rights. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys need to understand what common law is. It had nothing to do with no Jewish, I mean not Jewish, but no uh, stupid king's court. When they say law of the land, it meant law of the people. Now let's do that. I'm going to put that phrase in. Now, I don't know if that phrase has ever been uttered, or uttered, okay? Wake up. The phrase, law of the land, means law of the people, question mark.
stop listening. Stop listening. I see he don't listen. I told him to stop listening. He's still listening. Stop listening. Moron. All right, hold on. Law of the land is the whole body of valid laws, statutory or otherwise, existing and enforced for centuries or jurisdictions at a particular date. Every valid statute is the law of the land. But nobody, look at this. Why would I listen to this junk? This is somebody who's telling me what it is as opposed to explaining to me what it is. Well, that explains, no. Law of the land means law of the people is what I said. See, this thing says all valid laws. Pay attention to the word valid laws. Valid means legal terminology. Okay, law of the land definition and meaning. So let's do refers to higher laws than that of common law. Did you, now look, wait, hold on a minute. <laughs> this is encyclopedia.com. Law of the land, look at that. The phrase law of the land has two connotations of constitutional dimensions. No, that's because some stupid court has explained this as opposed to the actual meaning. See, law of the land, a phrase used in the Magna Carta to refer to the then established law of the kingdom, the law of the king, as distinct from Roman or civil law. You see that Roman or civil law had nothing to do with it. Our laws did not come from Rome. Rome was the longest existing kingdom there was, but Britannia hated Rome. They would not have carried the Roman so-called laws into the British system. That's where Britain came from. Britannia, the colony of Britannia. They would not have carried the Roman law, a nation that lasted a thousand years. What they would have carried is their culture, not the laws. Okay, see this thing says supreme law of the land, but I needed law of the land means law of the people, and I'm not going to get that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in... Uh, the case text.com so that and then I'm gonna oh well you know we got chat GPT here so let's do this it's already here so I might as well I didn't know if I had it here or not because I wasn't even looking over here because this ain't it ain't got the phrase law of the land is a legal term equivalent to Latin blah 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 refers to all the laws enforced within the country origin and see that's not what I'm looking for I'm looking for the answer to my question. So let's see if I can get ChatGPT to answer my question. Because I don't appreciate the fact that it's sitting up here not wanting to answer my question. I don't care about sessions expiring. Okay, you about to expire. You keep with me. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. It, it's stupid. And it, it can't help it. All right, come on. Hurry on up. I don't need to add no password. We already have the password. Get on out of here. It's already saved. Get on out here. <sighs> okay. Now let's see if we can get it here. Even though I already have it open someplace else, we're going to put it here and see what we got. Yes. The phrase law of and the land see. generally refers to the laws that are in effect and applicable within a particular jurisdiction or country. It signifies the legal framework and regulations that govern the actions and conduct of individuals and organizations within that jurisdiction. The term law of the land does not specifically denote law of the people, but rather See, encompasses all the laws and regulations. So let me, let me correct it because it's giving me the same definition from Google. Wake up. Then what does the law of the people mean? Question mark. Stop listening. The term law of the people typically refers to a legal system or framework that is designed to prioritize and protect the rights and interests of the general population or the citizens of a country. 
it suggests that the laws and regulations are formulated with the welfare and well-being of the people in mind, ensuring fairness, justice, and equal treatment for all. The concept of the law of the people. Okay, now watch this. Wake up. What does the people of the land refer to? Question mark. Stop listening. The phrase all of the land typically refers to the entirety or total extent of a particular geographic Sorry, area or jurisdiction. That. Wake up. What does the phrase the people of the land refer to? Comma, does it not refer to the people of the earth? Question mark. Stop listening. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. The last question is mis is not misleading, but leading. It's a leading question so that I can keep him from misdirecting the answer. The phrase the people of the land typically refers to the inhabitants or residents of a specific geographic area or jurisdiction. It is used to identify and distinguish the individuals who reside within a particular territory or region, emphasizing their connection to the land they live on. The phrase the people of the land does not necessarily refer to all people on earth. Instead, it focuses on the specific population say, oh, associated with a particular land or territory. It's not specifically referred to all it is people a on Earth. Term, I didn't say highlighting the relationship between the people and the I specific geographic area they inhabit, rather than the encompassing the, the entire global population. Wake up. So, in the Hebrew Scriptures, when it referred to the people of the land, referring to the Hittites, comma the Amorites, comma the Amorites, comma the Perizzites, comma, the Gebizites, comma, and or the Philistines, comma, are you specifically saying that when it referred to the people of the land, it wasn't specifically referring to the people of the earth in that geographical area? Exclamation mark, question mark, question mark, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I asked a specific question. The phrase the people of the land referred to, does it not refer to the people of the earth? He's talking about earth as a planet and not the geographical area, which is referred to when you refer to the people of the land being the Hittites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, and so on and so forth. Nations that don't exist anymore. I apologize for any confusion caused. Of course. When referring to the people of the land in the context of Hebrew scriptures or any other specific cultural or religious texts, it is important to consider the specific context really? and interpretation so within that context. So why didn't you talk about the, in the specific context? The phrase the people of the land may indeed refer to the people living in a specific geographical area or region, such as the inhabitants of ancient Israel or the promised land. Shut up. I don't need you to say anything else. As long as we know that you weren't being specific, you were being general. You ignored mother. I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what you have to do when you're using the language models, because the language models are designed to go according to the general direction of things. Um, watch this question. I'm very interested in this. Wake up. When did Columbus arrive in, Amer in the Americas? Question mark. Did the people who arrived in the Americas with Columbus establish their own laws and rules based upon the then living community environment and circumstances? Question mark. When did they start bringing in the laws of England into the Americas? 
according to history? Question mark. Stop listening. The last one is misleading and leading at the same time because there was Christopher a start Christopher Columbus arrived in the Americas in 1492. Really? The Not arrival of Columbus and subsequent European explorers led to the establishment of various European colonies in the Americas. The laws and rules implemented by the European settlers in the Americas were influenced by a combination of factors, including their own legal traditions and the circumstances they encountered in the new environment. Really? So not the courts? Initially, the European settlers relied on their own systems of governance and laws. However, really? That's over the time, common law. as the colonies developed, there was an increasing influence develop. of English law in some of the American colonies. In some, the introduction of English laws in the Americas occurred gradually and varied among different colonies. So the common One significant law was not milestone the in the law. introduction of English laws in the Americas was the establishment of the Jamestown colony in Virginia in 1607. So are you the telling English me they didn't in start using brought with English them a legal law system based on English for more than a hundred years? As more English colonies were established, they also adopted and adapted elements of English legal traditions including really? statutory laws, they court systems, that junk, and huh? legal principles. Mm. It is important to note that while English laws played a significant role in shaping the legal systems of the American colonies, uh -huh. they were often modified or supplemented to address the unique circumstances and needs of exactly. the colonists so in the new world. Exactly, so there was a common law, and there was Eventually, no English law. the English legal heritage became one of the foundations for the development of American legal one systems and the eventual formation of the United States. Wake up. One second. Are you suggesting comma, that the original common law was that established by the colonists between 1492 and 1607? Question mark. That would mean that the original laws of the settlers in America was not established by the English common law and or English law, comma, but by the laws that developed by the settlers and the community in which they settled, question mark, because many of the English common laws or the English laws would have been inappropriate in the colonies as the circumstances were different and many of the conditions of England did not exist in the Americas. Is that correct? Question mark. Stop listening. Give me a second, it paused. Stop listening. Okay, it finished, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me. There's a, a fly that flew into my screen as my window is open, and I just had to give him something to go home with. So I have a, a air freshener designed especially for him. It comes from a company called RAID! I apologize. Anyway, hold on one second, everybody. How come you Apologies for any confusion. Allow me to clarify further. You gonna clarify? The arrival of European you, settlers in the clear. Americas, including Christopher Columbus and subsequent explorers, did not immediately establish a comprehensive legal system Nobody based on English common about law. A comprehensive legal Instead, system. in the early stages of colonization, the settlers relied on their own systems of governance and really? adapted their laws so based on the, the circumstances and needs of the specific communities they the established. The people established their own law. Interesting. The, law of the, the development of legal systems in the American colonies was a gradual process influenced by yes, various it factors. Was a, it was influenced, huh? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. For over a hundred years, there was no establishment of no stupid English common law or English courts or anything because it would not have been appropriate to do so because the conditions in the Americas were not the same as England. They had a lot of laws in England that were inappropriate and inapplicable to the conditions that were here in America. Okay, so it would not have fit. Plus, they were leaving the kings. Now, um, 
wake up. In England, from the 1200s to the 1500s, what laws were in place that made it illegal for citizens to possess a Bible? Stop listening. During the period from the 12th century to the 1500s, there were no explicit laws in England that made it illegal for citizens to possess a Bible as a general rule. However, there were certain restrictions and regulations related to Bible ownership and translation really? during specific so historical contexts. Really? One notable event in this regard was the promulgation of the Constitutions of Oxford in 1408, which restricted uh -huh. the translation of the Bible into English without authorization. Yep, this was mainly driven by concerns about the dissemination of heretical ideas no, and the need to maintain lie. the authority of the church. They wanted However, to keep it in Latin this restriction the primarily Latin targeted day. unauthorized translations and did not outright ban Bible ownership or reading. Really, is in that subsequent really the years, truth? particularly during the reign of King Henry VIII and the English Reformation in the 16th century, the availability and circulation of English Bibles increased. Authorized oh, translations, because, such as the Great really? Bible, 1539, uh -huh. were commissioned and made accessible to the general population. It is worth noting that while there were instances of religious persecution and restrictions on the ownership uh -huh. and distribution of certain religious there texts during this period, such actions religious? were typically driven by specific uh -huh. religious and political circumstances rather than a blanket really? prohibition on possessing the uh -huh. Bible. He's a liar. The accessibility and ownership of the Bible varied over time, and it is essential to consider the specific historical context and religious developments of each era to understand the nuances surrounding Bible possession in England during that period. Oh, you skipped a whole lot. It is worth noting that there were some instances of religious persecution and restrictions on ownership and distribution of certain texts and all that stuff. No. Watch, give me a second. Wake up. Wake up. So are you saying that there was no persecution of individuals for proselytizing, comma, and or telling their neighbors of Bible scriptures? I'm using too many resources, so it took it a minute. Sorry, forgot to click back here. This is the last question I'm going to ask it, and then I'm going to let you guys get back to your lives. I just wanted to explain to you the law and then the law. I apologize if my previous response. Come, was not, not clear during the period you mentioned there were indeed instances of persecution restrictions and controversies related to the possession and dissemination of Sorry, Bibles I got one in more question <laughs> hold on I did not mean to imply that there were no such events at various points in history there were laws decrees 
and actions taken by authorities that aimed to control the translation, distribution, or interpretation of religious texts, including the Bible. Uh, we're These measures were about often Bible, influenced by religious and political circumstances of the time. We don't care about the influence, we care about For whether example, or not it happened. During the reign of King Henry VIII and his successors, there were shifts in religious policies that affected the availability and ownership of Bibles. The Catholic Church and later the Protestant Church exerted control over religious texts, sometimes restricting access to unauthorized translations and persecuting individuals who promoted views contrary to the official doctrine. Yeah, yeah, Additionally, yeah. in different periods of history, there were cases where individuals faced persecution or punishment for proselytizing or spreading ideas considered heretical or opposing the established religious authority. I apologize for any confusion caused. Yes, you are an idiot. Okay, this is the last question. Wake up. Let's find, let's find out what he has to say. I'm not going to ask, I'll just explain why I asked this question, because this is the whole thing about Columbus, why he sailed the so-called ocean blue. The pilgrims, who he were English separatists, separatists seeking religious freedom, did indeed face religious persecution in England, which led to their decision to leave and seek a new life in the Americas. The primary reason for their migration was indeed to escape religious persecution and establish a community where they could freely practice their faith and proselytize really? without fear and of proselytize. persecution. You mean During the time of the pilgrims' journey, door door? the Church of England was the established church, and adherence to its doctrines and practices no, was required was by law. Oh, in England, yes. Those who dissented or deviated from the official church teachings, such as the pilgrims, faced persecution and restrictions on their religious practices. Exactly. They sought a place, they where, they a place where they could freely worship, they could worship, and, worship and, spread and spread their religious, religious beliefs without, without facing, facing hardship or persecution. And persecution. Now, while the religious while landscape, the religious of, England landscape of England was influenced by Catholicism in earlier centuries, by the time, by the time of the pilgrims', of the pilgrims migration, migration, the Church, the Church of England, England had, had already gone, gone through the English Reformation. English Reformation, please. The it English monarchs, such as King Henry VIII, had established the Church of England Church as a separate England, entity from the Catholic Church. It was still Catholic. However, religious divisions and tensions persisted, leading to persecution of dissenting. The desire Groups to like escape the religious persecution and establish a community where they the desire could to escape religious persecution and establish a community a where they could freely practice their faith was a significant motivation for the pilgrims' to journey the to the Americas. And they sought a place where they, they sought could a place where they could worship and proselytize according to their own beliefs without, without interference, interference from the established, from the established religious, religious authority in England. Authority of England. What you want to know? People talk about Jehovah's Witnesses all the time. This is their origin. This is the original pilgrims people they were the ones knocking on doors and talking to their neighbors about the Bible doesn't matter if you believe it I just gave you the history it doesn't matter if you believe it I just gave you the history so when you talk about the common law this is where the common law came from this is where the pilgrims came from it was hundreds of years later that America the beautiful the land of the brave, the home of the blah, 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 was established. But the original common law was based on the Ten Commandments because that is what they were preaching. That's what they brought over. They did not bring over the laws of England. So if anybody tells you that the original common law was that junk from England, they're lying to you. But because 
people believe that junk, they're led astray. They're a hoodwink. They're torn asunder. They are, well, bamboozled. I can't help that. Like I said, I just showed it to you. I, I, like I said, the couple of questions was, like I said, leading, because I knew what he would normally give if I did not put in and do this the way I did it. That's why I said I had one final question. So I could prove to you that the original pilgrims were not those people you hear about that came over in the late 1600s, 1700s. Those were the businessmen because they wanted to come and strip it of its natural resources. They came for business ventures. They are not the founding fathers. They try to make you think that it was the 1600s that the pilgrims came over. It was the 1400s, everyone. There was no slavery here. They brought slavery here because they brought it with business. They brought that junk here. It wasn't here originally. So those of you who have been taught something different, I can't help that. Those of you who believe the Constitution is what they say it is, I can't help that either. I can only tell you what the real history is. I didn't learn this from Jehovah's Witnesses. I didn't learn this from Tommy. I didn't learn this from Michael. I learned this from the World Book Encyclopedia. I told you, my mother bought us the World Book Encyclopedia. She paid $250 when $250 will equal $800, $900 now when she paid it. But she did that for us primarily, I promise you. She never said it, but I could tell because I'm the only one who really used it. She did that for me. I'm just, I'm just telling you the truth. I saw her when she bought it. I was right there when she made the idea to purchase it. When she told all of us, come here, I want y'all to see this. When she made the purchase, she couldn't afford that. But I know she did that for me. It was my mindset. I was the book person. I, I, I couldn't stand books. So she was trying to get me into books. I spent way too many days in our den just going through the encyclopedia. Door closed, just me in there, reading things in the encyclopedia. Just reading, reading, reading. I hated reading, but I did go through that World Book Encyclopedia. That's why I talk about it to this day. Even when we moved from there, I took the World Book Encyclopedia with me. I held on to that for as long as I could because it meant more than me than it meant to anybody else in my family. Okay? So now you know. So I'm not talking about things I don't already understand, things I don't already know. Nobody taught me most of this. Most of this I had to learn on my own. But talking to those guys on the bus, talking to, listening to my father and his friends talk, talking to my friends in school, doing research, challenging them on things, having arguments, conversations. We didn't call them arguments. We stopped calling them arguments. We didn't argue, we debated. And that's what we talked about. We talked about debating all the time. So that's why when people try to debate with me, they're, they're not qualified to debate with me because they cannot hold their own because they come at me with argument. They don't come at me with facts. My friends and I weren't allowed to come at each other with arguments. We had to come with facts. That's why we say we didn't argue, we debated. This wasn't that debating in court well who has the better argument that junk is bull okay it's who has the better facts ladies and gentlemen you cannot argue a fact you cannot argue a fact a fact stands on its own that's why i left that group because i gave them facts and they couldn't handle the facts that's why many of you cannot handle my videos because you cannot handle facts you want to sit up here and argue because you don't like the way it's presented um, I was going to say F you if you don't like the way it's presented. You're supposed to accept the fact for what it is and not because you don't like the way it's presented. That's why I can't stand people because we got to the state and, 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 and the mindset to where I don't like you. Who cares about what you like? Nobody cares what you like. It's not about your likes and dislikes. What you can handle, what you can handle, it's not about you. Tupac says it's not about you. Well, he actually said it's all about you, but you know what I'm saying? What he said it was all about, he wasn't talking about a real person, though. So, 
those of you who want to learn something, I'm going to say this to you again because it makes all the sense in the world. If you want to learn something, no, forget that. We're going to go here because it's better that you come here and you understand because it's already completed. Oh, this ain't finished yet. This is almost finished, but it's got to catch up and this is almost finished and I got to stop doing all this stuff on a computer. So if you want to learn something, I'm going to put this link right here so you can go to each one of these videos. Cuckoo, C-O-C-C-O-C, -C -O -C web browser. And because this is not going to be up here, they can't let this be up here there that much longer. I'm surprised it's still here, honestly. Okay. Now, again, like I said, some of the things he says, we went ahead and clarified. Not disproved, but clarified. Because it was the knowledge at his time. Because he didn't have access to the Internet, so he didn't have access to the research. But what he had at that time, the basics, the principles, and that's what you must understand. He's going after and off of principles. Pay attention to the principles, people, that he's delivering to you. Pay attention to the principles. Download his videos. Listen to it. I promise you I will be. I'm encouraging you to do the same. Sorry that it's an hour and 26 minutes, but we're talking about law here. You can't talk about the law and it be a five-minute conversation. What I just told you, you can't run to court and start yelling and screaming this. That's not how it works. You have to affirm this for yourself. You have to do the research for yourself. And then you come and hit them across the head. Okay, many of you guys are going to try to hit people in the head with this, and they're going to look at you like you're crazy. Look, unlike all of those other people out there who tell you what the law is and tell you this and tell you that, and they sound so sure and so confident, it's called confidence schemes. They sound confident like they know what they're talking about, but they don't show you anything. Stop listening to those idiots. Go to the people who show you what they're talking about, where you can actually see the words, and then they can back it up. Everything that I've said from the beginning of this conversation till the end, I've backed everything up. Go look at every last one of my videos. I do not bring up something that I can't prove. And you see, I bring up stuff that I haven't even prepared to talk to you about, but yet I can still prove it. I bring up stuff that I haven't even looked up before, but I'm able to prove it. How is that? Because I understand what the principles of law is. I also understand what logic is. I know that there's no way in the world the colonists would have brought the laws of England over when they were escaping England. Everybody knows they were escaping England. You heard of the Boston Tea Party? So why would they bring the laws of England here? That made no sense. It was called the King's Law. The King was oppressive. Nobody liked the King. Go ahead and see which King any of the British people, the poor people, the peasants liked. Don't you understand that's why there was so much disenfranchisement in England the people couldn't stand the king the king only took care of those to whom were rich the oligarchy they, they took care of those rich people like they do today the people can't stand